Nice to see you after a long time, but with a veil. Pray God that sooner this veil goes, better it is for us, so that we start recognizing each other. Uh, it, uh, let me announce it, uh, congratulate uh, Dr. Rakesh and his team for putting together this conference and inviting us here to speak to, though a small audience, but it's, it's quite refreshing to have somebody in front of you after almost about eight months. It's, it's quite a long period in this age, isn't it? It's quite a long period. And uh, I don't know how many of our students, can, can uh, students raise hand? None. Yeah, three, four, five, six, that's great. So something has started happening, and I'm sure sooner we would start having much more students. Uh, you see, any university or uh, college, uh, having breadth of students is basically a, a, a piece of buildings. Yeah, we call it college, college or college or a university, unless otherwise all of us come together and interact. Uh, having uh, somebody like uh, Dr. <coughs> Sakti Kumar as a chief guest is so wonderful. Dr. Sakti Kumar belongs to that category, you know, of top, of top 5% uh, researchers in the computing. Top 5% title. He is, he is someone who has a very high H index. Though I, I know him uh, for almost four decades plus, both of us didn't have any inclination to the academics. I don't know how did we get into it. <laughs> At times when we talk, we wonder what made us to come to this. But. It's a wonderful field. It keeps you abreast of what's going around. It keeps you younger because you, the, the whole day you drag with the youngsters. So when it comes to the conference called Computing, Advances in Computing, uh, the topic chosen is, is quite relevant as uh, was indicated by one of us, our you know, speaker, Dr. Ashutosh the kind of advances which is happened and which is happening. If I really trace back the evolution of computing, it goes as, as long as my own age. I got older, but the computing still goes. It's getting younger and younger. Nobody can predict. I'll be a novice to predict what would happen to computing in the next 10 years, even five years is difficult. So I don't want to make any guess where I, I would be considered a novice in the area of education, if not in computing, because computing is not my specialized area. But what a little I know, the computing started almost about two centuries back. The, the concept, the, you know, the birth the computing came about two centuries back. And to be precise, it was in 1823 when uh, you know silicon was found by Baron Jones. Silicon. So that's the mother of computing. Other, if if, it, if there was no silicon, uh, probably we wouldn't have anything to do with computing as as it goes now. And even more than a century back, you know your your gates and switches were uh, uh, found. And then subsequently, the first transistor came to light in 1947. 1947, that's been almost 80 years. And the actual working IC was introduced in 1958. That is why I say it began with my birth. And from there onwards, from there onwards, you, we have had a gradual progress in the field of computing with the introduction of integrated circuit ICs. And Intel company was the one which started with the first microprocessor, and that processor probably was known as 8080. And that way back in 1974. In around that particular time, uh, one of the well-known uh, you know, computer expert who subsequently founded the Intel had said, that in the future, in the future, 
the growth of computing or computers or IC chips would be doubled every two years. That means when I say that, that the speed, the memory would be doubled, the power consumption and cost would be halved. That's what he predicted in 1970s. And it held so for about three decades, but now even the Moose law has failed because uh, uh, that's what's no more true. It's, it's not even uh, six months before that you have doubling of speed and memory. Okay. So if you look at back and trace it with our education system, that's where I would like to talk to you. Uh, see, today we talk about Industry 4.0 with matching Education 4.0. But I'm sorry to say that we still sit on Education 2.0. Education 1.0 was all about learning to read and write and a little bit of arithmetic. Education 2.0 came about memorization or the knowledge component. Education 3.0 was all about intelligence. That means ability to apply your knowledge. Now moving to education 4.0 would take much more and I'll, I'll, I'll relate it how far behind we are as far as education is concerned. We still are in that same age of memorization and getting some kind of a knowledge. Knowledge is nothing but knowing the facts and information. Unless otherwise you use this facts and information that knowledge lasts for a very short period of time. Now that part, memory part, has already been taken care of by computers. Because they have, today develop a very, very huge memory capacity. So you don't need to memorize anything. It's all available on the press of a button. Now subsequently, computers have also taken our other job, that is, Intelligence. Today, computers are performing what we are supposed to perform as a human. That is using your knowledge. So that's how the computers have moved. Now, if the computers starts taking our part, what human would do? And that's what was said about the, you know, a decade back. You know. In such conferences, we were discussing that if computers have started doing most what a human is supposed to do, then what should a human do? Then came up the idea the humans should start thinking. That's a great idea. So, you know, education should match to thinking. Which thinking? You know, you have higher order thinking and you have lower order thinking. That means higher order when I talk about when you read, study, okay, you need to analyze a situation, a concept, you need to apply it, and you need to evaluate and, if possible, wherever, create or develop it. Now that's what the thinking level is. That's we are talking about higher order thinking. But unfortunately, the computer has even caught up with us of thinking. The computer said, okay, hey, I'll do this job. Now what's left with the human? Uh, you know, this uh, renowned uh, businessman of uh, China, uh, Alibaba founder, who is it? Jack Ma? Okay. He was asked in one of the interviews that what should our human do and what should we teach our children, children of the future? If everything human be, uh, is what's supposed to do is being performed already by the computers, what should the people do then? What should we teach them in the classroom or in the universities? And the human has said that will the universities vanish from this earth? <coughs> of course not. He said then the human should do what computer can't do. He said, what? What is that? That is emotions. Computer would do everything other than emotions. 
So these are the emotions. These are the how to establish good relationship with other people. Teach them to protect their environment. Teach them sustainability. Teach them upliftment of human being. Teach them staying in peace, harmony with the environment as well as fellow beings. Now, that is what is missing in today's education. If you look at our education system today, it's full of text. That text is already available. Why should I in the classroom say what is already available on the public domain? Is that my role as a teacher? No, that's not my role as a teacher. I got to go to holistic education. Where I'm able to use my knowledge in the areas where you have no scope for the computer to. Where I can learn to deal with my fellow beings. Learn to take care of them. Today, when we talk about computers, they are into technical social domain, where everything, you name a, a domain, or name a sector where you do not have computation, whether it is health sector, transportation sector, leisure life, or any other sector, you have computers, or you have computational technology everywhere. Therefore, our educational system has to emphasize, emphasize, I say, on areas where computer cannot move into. And that area is uh, human, human emotions, and dealing with people, and taking care of uh, future generations. We as people have no authority at all to spoil the future of future generations. We need to sustain, we need to upkeep everything, what is given to us, take it for our future generations. With this, I like to say all the best to the conference and the team Rakesh for organizing this team. Congratulations to you all, putting all your efforts together. And I'm sure this conference will go a long way. Uh, I now leave platform open for our chief guest to bombard us with his high-end technological knowledge. Thank you. Thank you so much.